Well, I think the help is on the way. I think that uh, the court is going to significantly rein in the Ninth Circuit and enable our communities to start to solve the crisis problems that we face because it really is a crisis. And today uh, can be a new day. Uh, the fact is, in too many parts of our state, citizens can't walk down the street without having to dodge homeless encampments. Kids can't walk to school without having to dodge needles or waste. Citizens can't go uh, to the park without confronting uh, open drug use, and it's causing our communities to deteriorate. It's lowering the quality of life. It's causing crime to increase and a whole host of other problems. So with today's uh, hearing and what will hopefully be a positive decision in the coming months, this will be a new day where we'll be able to restore some uh, order to our communities. And it, perhaps even more important, we'll be able to get homeless individuals the help that they need. But Well, it's important to note that not even the Biden uh, administration or Gavin Newsom uh, agrees with that position. It's really an extreme position that says that cities and communities should have essentially no ability uh, to be able to uh, reclaim their public spaces and to uh, regulate camping and everything associated with that in our parks, on our sidewalks, in front of our businesses uh, where kids have to walk by uh, on the way to school. And so the reality that we have right now is that we have tied the hands of our communities, and we've also tied their hands in terms of being able to get homeless individuals, homeless individuals the help that they need. What folks who are homeless need is they need shelter. Oftentimes, they need substance abuse help. They need uh, help for uh, help for uh, mental uh, illness and a whole host of other problems. Right now, we have people dying on our streets every day, and so it's not good for homeless individuals. It's not good for people who have to uh, live and work and travel to school near the encampments. And so I'm hopeful that the court is going to do the right thing here. Uh, it will, at the very least, I think, significantly rein in uh, the Ninth Circuit, which has really basically stopped any regulation whatsoever of homeless encampments. But hopefully it'll overrule the underlying uh, Boise decision, which has uh, spawned such a tragic problem in our state, where we now have nine times more unsheltered homeless than the next closest state in the country. It really is a crisis. The misguided decision of the Ninth Circuit is an arch part blame okay. for it. Today is the chance for a course of correction. <laughs> well, I agree uh, with him in part. Uh, the governor's brief uh, is certainly in accordance with my view in that he is frustrated uh, with the way the Ninth Circuit has uh, tied the hands of local jurisdictions in uh, terms of being able to deal with homeless in Canada. So there's been, uh, apart from the initial Boise decision, a whole host of uh, really absurd decisions uh, that have basically just, you know, stopped them from being able to do uh, anything at all in these circumstances. So I agree with the governor there, but uh, his brief and the position of the Biden administration uh, still does not solve the underlying problem, uh, which is the Boise decision, which got the federal courts involved in hopeless policy uh, in the first place. And if you leave that decision in place, then you're still going to have the same types of issues uh, where cities can't, uh, you know, put time, place, and manner restrictions, have common sense regulations of when you can camp in parks on sidewalks and other places uh, without fear of litigation in a way that ties their hands. So uh, we do have some agreement here. I think that everyone agrees that it's a problem, uh, but I would differ, uh, differentiate my view is the Biden administration because I think that the outcome that they're going for here uh, would really solve the problem. I think that it'll put the uh, the policymaking uh, decisions back where they belong, and that's in the hands of policymakers. This experiment that the Ninth Circuit has undertaken the last uh, five, six years, saying that federal courts should be the ones that dictate homelessness policy, uh, has been a complete disaster. We could see that by the fact that California has way more homeless than the rest of the country, as well as uh, these other Western states have more homeless uh, than the rest of the country. So with this decision... What it means is that communities will be able to have common sense regulations uh, on uh, encampments appearing in their communities in public spaces in front of businesses and will be able to say, no, that's not allowed there. Law enforcement will be empowered uh, to keep those spaces clear for the public to enjoy and without all of the associated problems that come with it. So if the court rules the right way here, uh, then you know, the onus will, of course, be on policymakers to come up with the right policies. But jurisdictions that handle this uh, correctly and can look to other jurisdictions across the country that have handled homelessness in a smart and compassionate way will be able to reclaim their public spaces. They'll be able to significantly reduce crime. They'll be able to significantly reduce the spread of disease, prevent public health. They'll limit things like fires that have become 
uh, common. They'll limit the waste that we see on our streets as a result of homeless encampments. And they'll be able to uh, have a system in place to connect homeless individuals with the services that they need for finding access to housing or getting help with substance abuse uh, and with mental illness. And we'll have less people not only living on our streets, less people dying on our streets on a daily basis uh, if this decision goes the right way. Well, that's absolutely true in the sense that California, not our country, I mean, many places in our country, but California, you know, San Francisco, about as, uh, you know, it's as bad as anywhere. Uh, housing prices are way too high. And that's a separate discussion in terms of the regulations, the fees, uh, the constraints we put uh, on building housing. Uh, but even with that being the case, I think that you have good models uh, that are out there as communities that have been able to provide not just shelter, uh, but shelter connected with services that are ultimately designed to transition people out of homelessness. So that's ultimately the way that you want to solve the problem, right? Is to make it so fewer people are homeless, then they can turn their lives around, they can lift themselves up, they can have a high quality of life, they can get jobs, they can start families, all of these things. But the approach that this uh, lower court decision has resulted in, where we simply uh, have people out on our streets that aren't getting help, that are engaging in open drug use, that are committing crime in order to get by, and that are putting our citizens at risk, that simply hasn't worked. I mean, I think that there's a whole host of cities across the country that have been trying, and there are communities in California uh, that have been doing a good job. I mean, cities that I represent uh, have done a very good job with this problem. Roseville, for example, as, uh, as, this, as Foster County uh, more generally. Uh, have come up with some great solutions, but nevertheless, uh, their hands are tied because of the limits of this decision. The help that sure was well, just as Gorsuch was noting in there. I mean, there is a sort of necessity defense that is inherent in, in common law and kind of has become incorporated in the Fourteenth Amendment uh, that exists with respect to uh, to really any offense. Uh, so, uh, you know, but at the point at which that becomes relevant, uh, we're in a world that's a much, much better world, right? Uh, where we have uh, re restored the ability of local communities to address this very complicated problem, as everyone acknowledges, uh, in as the way that it's right for their community. That's the problem that we have right now, is we have federal courts dictating homelessness policy for very diverse areas who are experiencing the homelessness issue to greater or lesser degrees that have much different, uh, you know, living conditions, uh, types of communities, types of encampments that they're dealing with, and yet they are all having to adhere to an extremely uh, poorly defined uh, rule imposed by the courts. Uh, that's the problem. That's why you have even the likes of, of Governor Newsom uh, and the Biden administration uh, and uh, a whole host of cities like San Diego and San Francisco and San Jose that have come out and said, we need to do this differently. And that's the opportunity that this case can provide to start to do things differently, because I think we would all agree that the current approach is not working. When you have nine times more unsheltered homeless in California than anywhere else in the country, in any other state, where you have people that are living and dying on our streets every single day, not getting the help they need, and the problem only continues to get worse, it's simply not working. The people of California have been asking for change. And once this decision goes the right way, which I'm hopeful it will, it will be incumbent on policymakers then to deliver that change.